All right, guys, welcome back to Surviving Hollywood. I'm Johnny Ray Diaz. I'm Aaron Arnold. My name's Austin Arnold. And uh, we just sat down with uh, actor and producer Max Adler. Uh, you guys might be familiar with him on um, Glee. Maybe you've heard of the show. Um, he was heavy on that show, recurring for many, many seasons, and uh, has since gone on to work on some really other cool projects like uh, Clint Eastwood's Sully, uh, Trial of Chicago 7 with Aaron Sorkin. Um, so some really cool projects that, we, that he, uh, he worked on. So I actually met him. We worked on set together. We both had guest stars on this show on CBS called All Rise. And uh, we sort of just connected on there. And then I was like, hey, man, you know, I'd love to have you on the pod and, and share some stories, man. And I think the best thing that I lo- what I loved out of this uh, podcast was all the stories he had working with certain directors, how it happened, things like that, like from, you know, getting cast in a Woody Allen movie to then working with Clint Eastwood on Sully. I think that was my favorite stuff. What about you guys? Well, I just watched Aaron Sorkin's Trial of the Chicago 7, loved it. He produced and had a small part in it. And I just loved hearing the stories of, you know, is Aaron Sorkin a a stickler for lines? How was it just, you know, hanging out with Sasha Baron Cohen, who I know we all love? So I recommend either watch Trial of the Chicago 7. It'll probably be up for an Oscar this year, uh, either before this podcast or after. But he tells some great stories about it. Yeah, I liked his stories on Sasha Baron Cohen, and then he talked about Tom Hanks on Sully. And I guess, you know, I just love the energy that Max brought. You can tell, you know, he loves the craft. He loves acting and producing. It was cool talking to him about being on the producing side because he's actually like producing like really big things. So that's always interesting to, you know, just hear what he does. And I think you guys kind of geeked out a little bit because he's working on the show called Cryptos, this uh, Bitcoin TV show, sort of like a mix of entourage, but with Bitcoin. Exactly. So you guys geeked out a little bit. Tested the waters a little bit. We're like, hey, so, oh, that's pretty cool. You're working on a show called Cryptos. Yeah, I am working (laughs) on that. And then, you know, we got into it. That was fun. Yeah. But overall, just like a really cool dude, class act, uh, really enjoyed working with him. And uh, man, just had some great stories and a wealth of knowledge. So I think you guys will really dig it. Hollywood, Hollywood, represent man you know you I'm one, one of the few we're actually doing good this year yeah yeah i know i know so, well hey guys thanks for is, is, those, is this early because i said saturday you said 10 a.m is this too early for everyone or is this like are you guys up no nah, perfect perfect i'm, I'm up All at right. like eight you know walk the dog uh, sleep so. it in nice and late <laughs> <laughs> All right. not 6 a.m man you know yeah yeah it's, it's a little a little too early you know no, I, went, but, I do know i know but thanks for uh, thanks for coming on, man. I know you're also busy too, and you said you get an audition later. So thanks for uh, thanks for jumping on. Yeah. By the way, are you are you going in for uh, what the hell? A SWAT, like a trucker who's trying to save girls from being trafficked. I, I just did a guest star on SWAT right before oh. I met you. So oh well, good. Not then going. You're out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, good. we were just yeah. talking about that actually. I played a uh, I played a Guatemalan refugee on like I think the episode actually airs next week or something. So whoa, fast. Yeah. It's and I think uh, All Rise airs like next or a week after next too. Does it really? I think oh, so. Man. I don't I don't know. There's like weird gaps. I don't know like the next episode airs like Monday. But then yeah. I saw that ours, which you're up on, which is awesome on IMDb, it doesn't have a date yet. So I have no idea okay. when it's going to air. But uh, okay. I don't know. We'll see. We're like in the last four minutes of it anyway. So I know it's pretty. <laughs> we'll pretty, see. It's pretty, it's pretty quick anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, uh, oh, cool. but yeah, thanks for thanks for coming on, man. This is obviously yeah. Austin and Aaron. Uh, you know, yeah. Hey guys, met. Max, but, good um, to meet you, man. Austin, nice to meet you. I see that. Hi, Austin. Hi, Aaron. Yeah, cool. <laughs> How do you guys all know each other? We had we met in acting class years ago, and then we are all actors, and then we produce our own uh, short films and uh, stuff, and enter it in film festivals when we're you know on our free time when we're not acting. That's awesome. What acting class was it? Screen Actor System. Ever heard of it? 
Uh, no, but you know, there's 400 here, so that doesn't mean I, well, I don't know what, when was it or who ran it. I don't, I don't know. It, it was an on camera. It was more technical and sort of storytelling. Uh, it was multiple components, but um, we were there for years. Uh, we have wow. since gone, gone on to other classes, but um, you know, uh, that, was, that was probably like uh, I don't know. That was five five years ago something like that oh yeah okay it's yeah i did uh well i'm sure we'll, we'll talk about it. But yeah i did all the all the classes i hopped around to all the different studios and schools and all that but so that one i didn't us. hear of but doesn't yeah i'll tell i'll fill you, you have to tell that. us which one which one's the best um, uh sure yeah so so kind of a to kind of i guess sort of kick things off i know obviously uh you were born in new york but you were raised in arizona right Correct. so i know we kind of connected off of that because i'm from arizona so uh, tell me a little bit about your background in Arizona and when you decided to actually come out here. Uh, well, my background was a uh, great, great childhood growing up. Uh, Arizona was, you know, as you know, pretty chill, lots of space, uh, lots of lots areas of to run around and lot, yeah, well now in LA, I realized how wide those roads were and how cheap everything is. But, um, I was actually doing a lot of sports. It was like every quarter of the year, was something was like, you know, soccer or baseball, basketball, Pop Warner, you know, football. Um, my dad would coach. I had a lot of friends in all those, um, you know, different, different kind of groups and sports. And then I don't know, maybe around like 10. First of all, can you hear me and see me okay before I get too crazy? Okay. Yeah. Uh, around 10, I kind of had this inkling to act and, uh, and perform and do musicals. And I, um, I think I was, it's actually a really, a, a tangent, I guess uh, we can touch on now or I could talk later yeah. about, but I was in, really into like WB at the time. Like I was watching like Buffy the Vampire Slayer or like Seventh Heaven or like Dawson's Creek. Like that was like, you know, it was like the young, young adult uh, stuff or like those guilty, those were so guilty cool. pleasure. I, I couldn't Gilmore, tell my friends right? I was watching Dawson's Creek, but uh, secretly. No, no, I, yeah, I didn't tell them at the time. 20 years later, I feel, <laughs> yes. I feel more comfortable uh, with myself, but um. But I was, so I was watching, I was very into Seventh Heaven. We would watch it with like the whole family. We'd get around, it was, you know, have dinners, sit around, watch it. It was like good, good memories. And I remember like after the episode, there was like this, this like little brief, you know, behind the scenes, two minute thing with, with Barry Watson, who was like the cool older brother and Jessica Biel. And yeah. they were showing how like, when you go upstairs in the house, that it like led to like a wooden board because like the upstairs was a whole other set on like a movie studio. And it blew my mind. I was like, oh my gosh. You know, like I thought they were like in a house. And I was like, this whole thing is make-believe. And like, they're, they're going upstairs to nothing. And like, they're not really a family. Like, it was like this whole thing of like, that's magic. And like, I want in on that. Like, I want a part of that. So I like auditioned for my community theater uh, in like Fountain Hills, Arizona, which is like, you know, a small, small city for Jesus Christ Superstar. I got in like, you know, like the ensemble, like little kid who just, you know, sings pretty much like soprano at that time. Um, and then I was kind of balancing doing like, you know, theater and acting and everything in the summer and then like sports throughout the year. And then I got into high school and I just always anticipated I'd be like the, jo you know, Freddie Prince Jr. movies, you know, like Paul Walker. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, look at me. Like I'm a football player. I'm gonna have a varsity jacket. Like I'm gonna hang with cheerleaders. It was that thing. And, uh, and then my dad, was a soccer like star in college like he was like a, a beast like a great goalie and then he busted up his knees and, like ruined ruined that that kind of trajectory and became like a teacher and he was just like look like you're you're actually like a really good actor and if you want to do that like i kind of encourage you to go that direction because like you can get messed up playing high school football and like i don't know that you know you want to do that and like it's a time commitment and like just think about you know which direction you want to go in um, so I did, and then I kind of just like put sports on hold and like went fully into like show choir, jazz choir, you know, drama, like plays, musicals. And it was like, that was extracurricular. And then I just loved it. And then all my best friends were like in that group. And, uh, I just did it all through high school and I loved it. Uh, I felt I was good at it. I was getting parts and everything in like plays. I was, you know, winning, winning little awards in the community for, for show choir stuff. And I was like, I never want to do anything else. Like, I don't want to like grow up. I don't want like a real job. Like this is too much fun and like too much of a dream to like stop. So, um, but however, I thought it was, I mean, we talked, we touched based on this. Uh, I thought it was like impossible. Like who actually yeah. gets to live their dream of becoming an actor. 
So I signed up, you know, ASU and I was going to go to Walter Cronkite School of Journalism because I was yeah, like, we well, talk about shit, I'll still, yeah, like I'll, <laughs> yeah, I'll still be on TV. I'll have a script. I'll have hair and makeup and wardrobe. And it's the safe, you know, it's like, yeah, it's like, well, that yeah. seems like a little easier to get into. And right. like, you know, hey, I'm still like on TV. Cool. But um, like the two big things that happened was like one, my junior year, uh, a dude named Garrett Headland, who still is a very successful actor now was like going back and forth from Horizon High School, which is where we were at, uh, mm -hmm. to like audition in LA. And he booked Troy as Brad Pitt's little cousin. Yeah, and all of a yeah. sudden, like we were like in choir class and like he was in Malta shooting like sword fighting scenes with Brad wow. Pitt and Orlando Bloom. That's crazy. And I was like, oh, like someone that was like just here, like just went and made it in Hollywood. Like that's easy uh okay like maybe i could do it too still wasn't convinced um but then my senior year uh my mom had a lot of health issues and she passed away unexpectedly like like a lot sooner than everyone thought my like randomly senior year first quarter of senior year and that was like the big changing point because it was like all right you know no plan b like live for the day tomorrow's promise to nobody i truly like understood that uh and i was just like I don't know what's going to, why, why am I going to like settle if like I'm going to die tomorrow, you know, cause now I know how real that is. So just kind of like withdrew from ASU and like told everyone, I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to like graduate, save up some money and like go. Uh, and, and I did. And so that I graduated in 04. I worked at the uh, desert Ridge Marriott as a valet, saved up a few grand, which to me was like the most I ever had, but yeah. Blew that like the first week I was in LA <laughs> and uh and then I came here at 18 knowing no one or nothing I literally thought you know you just sign up for open calls for like Spielberg movies and then I was like oh this is right. there's a lot of doors and hoops to jump through this is harder than I thought um so that was uh that that brings me to what's LA. the first what's the first place that you lived in and like what neighborhood did you move to uh, so one, a, a girl that I was doing choir with in high school, um, Petrina was going to the fashion Institute downtown. And so she oh, was living yeah, okay. at a place at like sunset in Fairfax, which again, to me, I was like sunset Boulevard. Oh, sweet. Like seventies Corvettes and palm trees. And then I was like, Oh shit. Like this is sunset <laughs> Boulevard. It's like, you know, that yeah. Ralph's on like poinsettia. I'm just like, Filthy, not, man. not Filthy. classy. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> So I was like, oh boy. And like, she was like remodeling her place at the time. So, you know, it was like, like plastic hanging and like paint all over the place. And like, I just remember like my dad and my little brother, like dropping me off. And like, we were all crying. We were like, what, what am I doing? Like, I'm all alone. And then it kind of hits. It was like, I don't know how to grocery shop or like, where do I go to mail a letter? And like, what are these five street parking signs? Because in Arizona, I could park on any side of the street for five days. Yeah. And no one said anything like what's going why, why what are these tickets like everything everything you know i was on the same lane on a freeway and all of a sudden i was on like five different freeways and i was like ah this is like really tough you know and yeah. i remember going out there thinking like going out here i was like i'm gonna give myself two years and like if i don't make it i can always go back to college and i was like two weeks into it i was like this might take longer than two years like this is gonna yeah. this is gonna be a bit you know so that's so why i lived i lived there for like a month but then another buddy of mine um who i was doing plays with in high school danny was gonna, was going to u of a but he mm. knew i was out here and he didn't like u of a and was like you know what like i think i'm gonna leave u of a and i'd like to join you out there so i was like sweet like i want to get you know out of out of the sunset area so we ended up moving to sherman oaks together okay. like about a month after i was here and that's kind of now i've been like a valley guy um ever since so we lived there for a couple of years and it was really awesome to have like a close friend um you know as a roommate and people would come out and visit us and like you know see us like doing the living the dream in la or yeah. trying to um i was working at the marriott and he was at a bf chang's but it was a dream to be in la um and so yeah and then i was like i, I think the first classes i took was uh something called like the acting core uh which i just found online when i was in arizona it was like a meisner thing so i was doing that i jumped into like leslie Kahn. i did okay. brian brian reese um scott sadita like i just kind of like all, so the, all the popular kind of like well-known ones just, i guess yeah yeah, I was just like, you know, I'm, all I wanted to do was just like, you know, work to have some money. And like, like my goal was like every I wanted to stay like focused because I saw how easy it was to just like either get beaten down or just like smoke pot and watch movies. And I was just like, no, like I need to like I need to like hustle because like someone's coming here every day, like fired up and like fresh and ready to kick ass. And like so it was my goal is like every day I wanted to do something that was like towards my goal.
So it was just like reading every book I could, going to Sam French, like picking up plays or like, you know, acting technique books, going to every class I could, just like kind of soaking it all in, soaking it all in. Um, and so that's, uh, that, that was that. How long, how long did it, you feel like it took you to kind of feel like comfortable here? Like, all right, I'm here, I live here. Because like when I first moved here, I felt like it took me, I didn't know anybody either. I felt like it took me like two years until I was like, yeah. all right, I think I know where things kind of are now. Like I know the lay of the land. I kind of know what I need. I'm supposed to do now. Like, you know, I got finally got an agent. Like, I kind of like figured things out. Like, what? At two years, I was like, "All right, I live here now." Yeah. This is. I don't know. Yeah. I think it was the. Uh, I think it was yeah, like a two year mark because I think you know I, I moved out here kind of like thinking I was like ready just to like you know ready to do it and then I uh, and then I did I was doing uh, extra work. I registered with Central Casting to do background. And that, that got me more fired up because I was there like watching and learning. And I was like, I can do that. Like, I know, I know I can do what that person's doing. I'm like, this yeah. sucks. And I feel like I'm like, you know, put, put me in coach. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was so hard to get an agent. That, again, like I, I really thought you just came out here and there's just like a line where you can audition. And then I realized there's like gatekeepers to gatekeepers to gatekeepers. And it's like, then they have to actually work and then they have to pitch. So what happened was, you know, I did all the headshot thing. I don't know. I'm, I know I'm older than you guys. I'm 35, but there were, do you remember like Isgo or Argentum? It was like these labs where you had to print out yeah, like 500 I, shots. I remember there. Argentum. Yeah. Me too. Right. Yeah. Right. So before the electronic thumbnail days when you actually had yeah. like, you know, print out your <laughs> headshots Paper. and resume. Yeah. Right. So I feel so old. But um, <laughs> so I did that and like mailed out. I mean, there was like a book at Samuel French that was like, uh, you and know, also all the Samuel agents French, down. rest in peace, you know, rest in peace and yeah, one on one coffee shop now, rest in peace. Like, that's right, LA, LA Staples. But, um, yeah. so there was like a book, like, like a magazine almost that said, like, all the agents in town, if they were taking submissions, what they were looking for. So I just like yeah. combed through it, sent out, I remember 80 because I remember paying for the postage and it was a big deal. And, um, I was like, oh, I'll hear back from like five and I'll be able to pick from like my top five zero like zero responses out of 80 and that was like a, that was a hard pill to swallow but i remember being at an acting class and like telling just another student that was there about that and he was like you know what you should intern at an agency because then you kind of like get in the back door and like you know they get to know you and then mm -hmm. take out you know take you out to lunch and you're there all day and you see how things work so i went again back through the 80 agencies and like hit them all up and was like, Hey, did you need an intern? I'll be there whenever I'll work for free, you know? And, and two of them finally you know, replied. Um, and so I ended up working, you know, full-time at the Marriott as a valet at night. And then during the day, uh, a couple of days a week, I was interning at two agencies. One, one was angel city talent. Uh, and one at the time, Oh man, identity, yeah, I, I think it was called. It, I have like, heard it, of angel it, city. Yeah. Um, Angel City was, yeah, Mimi Mayer was great. And then I think, I think it was, oh, the, or like the Morgan Agency or Identity, it, they, they've closed down okay. since, but I was working at, working at them. And that actually proved to be very valuable because then I, I really learned like how things work, how, how people are pitched, how, uh, how breakdowns work, like mm. who casting directors are, just like a really cool, like inside back, uh, you know, backdoor look at what the industry is. That's really um, smart to kind of do it that back way. I, I think most actors probably wouldn't have you know, considered that as an option, you know? So that's pretty cool. That I mean, that ended up working out that way. For, yeah. Yeah. Well it did. So I was there for like, I was doing that for like six months. Um, by the way, I just turned a little heater on. Do you hear that? Mm -mm. You'll yeah. hear. Okay, great. Um, so there was a show called like four Kings, uh, a while ago, there was like a comedy about these four dudes in New York. And I remember like helping the agent submit on that. And I was like, I could play this part. So kind of secretly, I like, printed out the sides. It was like 12 pages. I went and like worked on it on my own. And when I came back for the next intern shift, I just kind of said like, look, like, you know, you know, I'm trying to be an actor and I worked on these sides. And I'm like, if you have time, can I, can I read for you? And if you think I'm decent, like, can you maybe pitch me to get in and at least audition? And she seemed impressed by that and was like, sure. And then and I did. Uh, and she liked it and did pitch me and they wouldn't see me, but she signed me. <laughs> Um, so I got That's my cool. agent that way. Really cool. So yeah. yeah, I was with, I was with them, um, for a few gigs. I got, I got a commercial, I got a couple of little co-stars. Uh, so full circle, my first co-star was what about Brian with Barry Watson, the brother from seventh heaven. And Dude. so I got to work with him. I know. That's crazy, pretty right? awesome, man. It really was. There was like a pool hall scene where I was like this asshole frat guy who like <laughs> argued over the pool table. And I was just like, 
dude, like <laughs> I did watched you, you in seventh heaven. Oh, did you, you did you geek out on him a little bit? Did you tell him oh, that? Like, yeah. hey man, I was a like, huge fan. All right. Yeah, which is also weird, you know. Like, <laughs> right. Oh, okay. Like that's uh no, but he was really sweet, you know, really nice. And um, and it was really cool. And I did that and like Ghost Whisperer, uh also crazy because I was like, I just watched Jennifer Love Hewitt, you know, like my whole life, and like here we are. I was like this that, that whole like, whoa, like this, yeah. I'm actually doing it. So after I did that, I went to the other agency and was like, yo, like now, now I'm SAG and I have a couple credits and, uh, you know, can I, can I climb up the ladder a little bit? And, and then they signed me and then they got me a couple gigs and then it just kind of like went from there. Um, and so how that's kind of uh, how it, how the ball got rolling. How did uh, Glee end up kind of happening? You want to talk about that? Glee? Uh, nope. Not going to talk uh, about Glee. All right. <laughs> no, cool. um, no, no. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Appreciate it, Max. Thanks guys. Uh, have a good day. <laughs> good episode. No, um, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, right? We can, we can we can add in some filler. Um, no, Glee was great. Obviously, a great experience. Glee was crazy because so that well, I was with an agency called the Beverly Hecht Agency. Great agent named Robert Depp, um, and he just submitted me. Uh, it was a co-star at the time. It was like two lines, um, but I had done show choir as you know growing up, and I was like a huge fan of Nip Tuck, which Ryan Murphy wrote. And like, we, like we would have like parties in high school. Where we'd get together at like different friends' houses and like that was have a big parties. Show. That was a big show. Mm -hmm. I do remember that show. Yeah. So this thing came out and I was like, holy shit, like this is Ryan Murphy who is like, uh, like my idol you now. And then, and then show choir. So I took the audition very seriously. So at this point now, rewind, I was, I was privately coaching because now I'm like four years into LA. Okay. I had done these couple co-stars, but like no real, you know, it's like you go home for Thanksgiving and they're like, where's the big movie? You know? And I'm like, oh, I did like <laughs> four lines on cold case that got cut. And they're like, okay. And like, cool. And I was like, God damn it. So, um, so that, so I started going to private guy. I asked a couple of actor friends that were doing really well. And I was like, look, like I've done all the classes. Like at that point I was like, I'm spending, you know, three or $400 a month. I get up for six minutes out of a three hour class. I'm watching everyone else kind of like do the same stuff. I'm like, I want just like, I want to put my money into like, into me and like what I'm doing wrong or what I can do better. Mm -hmm. So they, they found a private coach, <clears throat> a great coach, this guy named Jeff Kreiser, who was just like working out of his house. And it was like just two hours, like you and him working on like yourself and like what your, what your own blockages are and like, you know, your own mannerisms and habits and what you do. And then we're actually working on scenes. Um, so he was great and kind of changed up my whole, my whole game. He had great advice he gave me that I guess I could pass on was, um, at that point. So I, he was saying that like, you know, like, let's say like you're a batter in baseball, you know, and like you have like this natural classic swing that like you love and you're having some success and like you're doing really well. <clears throat> and then along the way, like everyone's like, Hey, maybe like, you know, choke up on the bat and like move your elbows and like spread your legs a little bit, stand back from the plate. And you start hearing all this stuff. Then you kind of like forget, like, just like your natural thing that like, made you love it in the first place. And that really resonated with me because I felt like, you know, I was just having fun in high school and I was just like enjoying it and like bringing myself to it and like taking risks and making choices. And then like those four years, you're just like, like am, I, am I good enough? Am I this? Am I that? Like, should I push yeah. harder? Should I be more natural? Should I be more like this guy, more like that guy? And then like along the way, you're just like, God, like, yeah, like, I kind of like forgot, like just to have fun and like bring myself to it. And so that kind of like took me back to like, oh yeah, like, come on. Like, I know it's a business, but like, if I have fun, like that, that is the success because like, I'm just more natural and like kind of throw it away more. So anyway, I saw him for Glee for those two lines because I was just like, I really want this show. So we coached for two hours. I was like, who is this guy? And like, what does it mean when he throws a slushy in the face and talks about like how he's jealous of this guy getting like pubes before he got pubes. And then, you know, but like we coached on it. And then another kind of full circle thing was so udk robert allrich and uh, yeah. eric dawson and carol kritzer great casting yeah, directors great casting office, yeah. um so when i first moved out here oh four uh i got advice um from my uncle who like way back in the day used to be an editor and told me about this site called imdb and i was like what <laughs> how am i gonna remember those letters you know and he was just like go through every show or movie you, you love or that inspired you or that you like the acting and look up who cast those and like aim to have those casting directors know who you are because they're like first level, you know, you have to kind of get through. So UDK, because they did Nip Tuck, was like one of my, my top choice. And like right. every week, because they were, they were in the Valley, right next to Angel City Talent, I would literally drop my headshot off in this bin outside the door that was like submission that I don't know if they ever looked at it, but like yeah. I just felt like I was doing doing something to 
to, to reach do, the yeah, goal. To, to get that so, closer. Yeah. right. So then cut to their casting glee. And then I'm in there, you know, um, and it was just like the, that crazy thing. And there was like an hour and a half wait, you know, 30 dudes. And I was like, oh my God, like, I'm not going to get this. And I just kind of went in there and just like, here it is, you know, like, this is like, like I, I coached on it. I know I can do it, like whatever. And in the room at the end of the audition, first time and probably last time it happened, Robert uh, Ulrich straight up said like, oh my gosh, you're our choice for this. Like, you're perfect. And I was like, what? Like an actor's dream. Man. Amazing. That's, yeah. That's, I was like, that's, really? That's, like, let's sign yeah. the paperwork, you know? Yeah. So I was like, this is amazing. I'm like, you have no idea how much this means. Like, I've been trying to get in for you for four years. And like, I did show choir and I love Ryan Murphy and the whole thing. Um, and then like two days later. <laughs> and he's like, know, never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He's like, like uh, you want someone give a shit. All right, <laughs> like, all right. That's, that's you want enough. this too bad. But, yeah. Um, so two, two days later, I heard I got it, and it was just one day. Uh, but then, yeah, that just became a recurring thing throughout the whole six years. That was the thing where, um, I mean, mysterious, frustrating, weird. It was just like, you know, all I wanted was, all I wanted was to work, which is great. And that show was huge, like, you know, a phenomenon. And it was amazing. Dream come true. And the role really, you know, from just like a bully who throws slushies to all of a sudden they find out that he's closeted and he's torturing like, you know, the, the, the homosexual kid because he's gay and because he's out and that, you know, my character couldn't be. And then he attempts suicide. Then he comes out the other side of it. And it was like, it was like what a dream role that like you show yeah. me that in a breakdown. Like, oh, my gosh, that was just kind of written, you know, for me and like with me as I went through the process. But I never, there was never, it was so weird because I always tried to like talk to the producers and writers about it and just like, you know, like, let's, oh my gosh, like, look what we did or like, what's coming up or like, what do you think about that? And it was always just like, you'll get the script. Like, oh, you'll see. It was, it was always like, are we, are we going to talk about like what's happening? Like, it was like, this mm. is like crazy. And we never did. And mm. uh, it's still, still to this day, never had a, you know, never a series regular, never a contract. I never knew if it was my last episode. It was just kind of like randomly my agent would call five weeks later and they say like, you're in another and one. They need you for that. I was like, great. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, yeah. gosh, like, so like, am I, it was like this thing where like, everyone was like, oh, are you like living in the hills and like buying boats and like you're set? And I was like, no, I'm like still working at a restaurant and like waiting to see if I'm ever going to be back on TV again. And like, it was, you know, I'm getting like recognized, but then I'm like pouring lemonade yeah. and it was like really weird. Um, but what a wild experience though, man. Because oh, I mean, yeah, that, that's awesome. obviously like an actor's blessing to, you know, get a co-star and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, actually, no, you're going to be recurring for five seasons or whatever. Like On I the mean, hottest show. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everybody knew still, that show on TV still the dream look i mean all rise we're like i think we can come back like you know like that that's <laughs> the goal is like right you you do something and you impress someone <clears throat> and and you get to come back without having to audition you know what i mean like that's that's the that's the dream so glee really was really was a dream and it was a game changer and then it opened up you know every it was like i got to go to better agencies better management get into rooms you know it was like it was just validation to Hollywood that like casting directors were like, Oh, okay. Like this guy's like working and like, he knows what he's doing. And, and, um, you know, just kind of change their perception, which then in turn does sadly, like, you know, change your perception of yourself. Like, you know, you, you kind of feel worthy and, and validated and, um, and more confident, which kind of work begets work. Um, and so that was, that was kind of, that, that was that. And that was just a dream. I mean, we were, yeah. you know, the golden globes were won. like we were at SAG awards. I got to go to conventions and, in London, like meet people from around the world that that were like so connecting with the show and my character, and like I was hearing from people in different countries, and it was like really like whoa, like it's kind of wild, you know, that you you you're talking about how you know the character went through such a such an arc, you know what I mean, of everything that they went through, and then you weren't necessarily that involved with that yeah, process, no. and at the same time, them not telling you like oh this is what's happening, it's kind of like oh here it is. Do you think part no, of that yeah. too was was like it was sort of they're trying to be secretive because they don't want the script to get out is that was that part of it or was it just what what do you think it was i don't think it was that i think it was just like they were just kind of secretive in general like they just kind of wanted like you know it was like the writer's room and then like whatever kind of came out you know would come out it was also very chaotic because it was like i mean look it was a bunch of young people making lots of money really quickly and there were you know there was there was attitudes and there was egos there's people that show up late or leave early and i'm doing scenes with their stand-in um you know there was like three episodes shooting at once you know scripts weren't done being written while we were shooting the other episode it was just it was kind of like you know a very like chaotic thing that was also this like you know phenomenon but we were like kind of like in this bubble but I always felt very much like on the outer 
outer circle of that because like I wasn't ever like in the glee club. Like there was a very kind of like, you know, inner like like the glee club in real life, you know, like they were all they were very close. So they'd have, you know, parties or whatever. And like I, I wasn't really like in that world because I was like the dude, like the bully who would just kind of show up and like shove them once in a while. So I never really got to like <laughs> hang with them on set and like have downtime. Like I was kind of like it was kind of like yeah. a separate thing. Um, and so it was like, there was that, you know, so it, it was like this weird, like, I'm, I'm here, like I'm on the show, but like, I'm not like really on the show. And yeah. it was always kind of like dancing of like, it was like this jump rope thing of like, you know, kind of like in, out, in, in, you know, and then I like four weeks of like nothing. And, like, they're just like shooting and, you know, then you kind of come in you're almost like the new kid all over again. So it was a very weird kind of push and pull relationship where like, again, to the outside world, I was like, oh, you're on Glee. And then like, but like when I, but like on Glee, like oh, I'm not on Glee or like, I'm lucky to be there. So it was kind of a weird, a weird thing that mm. that's still, that still is weird. Um, but, but for me, you know, it was really just, yeah, to get to play that role, to get to stop working at restaurants, uh, you know, to get to be a working actor, to have a lot of doors opened up, um, connect with lots of people from, you know, around the world. Uh, yeah. So it was all, it was, it was really a, a dream, but, um, but certainly a weird experience. And even to this day, you know, it's, it's like, I don't, I haven't talked to Ryan Murphy. Like I've been on another one of the show. It's just kind of like that. Did that happen? Like, it's like, this is this weird, like, uh, yeah, like there hasn't that's been like closure on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, and yeah, then obviously I mean, a lot of, you know, the fact that you were on there for so, such a long time, I mean, you would think that there was, you know, you would have fostered all these connections with producers and directors yeah. on there and, uh, and you'd have some sort of at least some kind of relationship, which is. And I do, so amazing. a few yeah. of the cast members and I do, you know, okay. are, are close okay. and we do talk for sure. And there are producers and directors that, you know, that I became close with that I do talk. I mean, we've like one the episode where I attempted suicide, um, uh, a, a director who's, who was on like, you know, Nip Talk, who's like directing, editing. His name is Brad Beaker. He's great. Um, we got invited to like these seminars about suicide prevention and like mental health awareness. And so like we started like doing this whole, you know, path together. Um, there's other directors that came on that I've like pitched other, you know, uh, projects of mine too. So relationships came out of it um, for sure. But yeah, right. it's just, it's just a weird, uh, a yeah. weird, weird experience, you know, with, with the top dogs on it. But I, I just think that was very like, you know, they were kind of protecting themselves uh, and, and didn't really want to get, you know, too close to, to the actual person. They just kind of wanted like the characters and the show. But obviously, as you know, as the world's seen uh, a lot, you know, has happened since to uh, to several, you know, people uh, tragically. Um, so it's just it's it's all it's all weird. You know, and it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, but at least but, when, yeah. you, when, when you went home, at least now people were like, oh, you're on something now. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that was least, yeah, that was great. We're like, you know, yeah, at least like, work, yeah, yeah. like people like could quote lines and like, yeah, you know, family Thanksgiving. <laughs> I was like cool to my grandma you know like yeah it was like all right like it was very a very validating uh thing yeah, yeah. Keep people offering you slushies yeah yeah or like they would drive drive past and do like the l on the forehead you know like, like, the famous glee thing i was like oh my gosh really the first the very like the, the first time i actually got asked for an autograph i was just talking to my wife about this uh days ago because it was so crazy because i got invited to go to the kennedy center uh in mm. washington dc to speak at like the anti-defamation leagues wow. big uh like you know like like, like i was like a concert against hate and you know like a big uh symphony and i got to like, you know, like speak talk about pressure crazy... that's a lot more <laughs> yeah it was nuts and i was just like oh my like this changed like you know like days ago like no one knew who i was but it was like the episode aired that was like when i when i kissed chris colfer in the locker room and it was like you find out that uh that my character is closeted and hiding it and that kind of changed everything. And it was, I remember like being backstage at the Kennedy Center, like this fancy dinner, like a bunch of like, you know, rich people. And that was like the first time someone was like, can I have your autograph, sir? And I was like, <laughs> me? Like, whoa, like that was yeah. very cool. Um, so yeah, it was, it was kind of like th those moments are just like, so, you know, so surreal. Which then makes it all the more weird now that I'm like going in for like four lines on like season 18 of some some show and then like not yeah. getting it. And I was like, hey, like I, I spoke at like the Kennedy Center seven years ago, <laughs> you know? uh so well, that, that's too. There's just, there's that's, no, that's like, a good riding. transition man because i was gonna yeah. say because I, I feel like you know we and we kind of talked about this on set a little bit um yeah but uh you know post glee i mean yeah i mean it had to be obviously like a, like you said like kind of a game changer and to a point where i feel like you know a lot of things would essentially kind of be offered to you can you kind of like talk about that or how did that whole thing kind of go on afterward you know i mean i think for like a year after glee there was still like that heat 
where there wasn't really any offers. Um, it was always still having to audition and prove myself and hustle. But because I had like the Glee credit, I was like more valuable to people like, oh, well, at least like, you know, if we get him, like we kind of get like the Glee fans. So I think like several jobs um, came because, you know, it was like maybe like between me and somebody else, but I was like, but he's like, but he's the guy on Glee, so like that'll help our project. So that helped. But then, you know, a couple of years after when it kind of like starts, you know, dying down and like other shows start to become like the hot show, um, it didn't really matter so much. You know, like, again, like I, I had the agent, I had the manager, like casting directors knew who I was. Like there was, there was, there was definitely like a difference of like what world I was in now, you know what I mean? But really it gets harder because now, you know, I'm competing with, 40 other dudes in an audition who also have, you know, a shit ton of credits who have recurred, who have been series regulars, who know the cast directors, who know the producers, you know, so it's, it's different than like coming in with like a bunch of random dudes who moved here for two lines. Now it's like, oh, this cast director knows and has personal relationships with like every one of us. And so mm. it just like leveled out, you know, it's like, it's kind of like that, you know, like, like the worm who like comes up and like goes back down. Uh, that's kind of what it felt like. It was like, oh, like I, I like rose above this level but now now there's like this next you know uh, echelon to like the battle uh or like like a video game you know like the next level um so uh equally equally is hard i mean i you know i'm getting i get opportunities i'm getting opportunities i'm you know working like look like i feel very grateful because i've i've got i did cafe society with woody allen i did sully with clint eastwood i just did chicago seven with aaron sorkin like i've worked with amazing people it's been great but that like series regular has still like eluded me, you know, like, like, like mm. the, like the, the steady gig. I don't know anything about in like, you know, 15 years of being here. It's, it's always been like hustle, 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 get a job. Great. Go back. Like, you know, today, like audition it. It's like, there's just, it, I've never been able to like sit back. Not that I don't, I don't know if I ever will. I mean, unless you're like, you know, Ryan Gosling or something, which like, you know, that's pretty damn hard. But um, so, yeah, I think that was the, uh, another lesson learned. I thought, you know, same thing. Oh, I'm on Glee smooth sailing like let the offers roll in you know right, right. uh and it's it's not it's just like you're still you still have to hustle and i don't get obviously most auditions i audition for um so yeah so do, still do you still feel tough. like you you kind of got like typecast a little bit uh coming off of glee like you were getting sort of like a lot of like maybe bully type roles or sort of things like that did you kind of find that a little maybe. bit or? i mean yeah i just think i think but I'm also like, you know, it's like my size. Like I'm just like, I'm like, I'm like right. a big, big like imposing, dude, yeah. like intimidating dude. Yeah. So yeah. I think that naturally there's just like, that's kind of, you know, where people see me. I'm sure Glee led to that. And sometimes people would give me opportunities, but I, even, you know, for like the science, like the, the whiz kid at the computer, you know, like, like the FBI guy with the glasses, who's like, no, nah, like, oh, they're at, <laughs> you know, these coordinates. But I was like, no, like, I don't even believe it. I'm like, that guy right there is clearly like the guy you're going to cast. So, you know, I'd go in. But, you know, like a lot of times you just kind of you're like, you know, you're the guy like you you, you walk in and you get an image of, of who that person is just in a second. Um, and there's not much you can do. Like, you know, you can be a great actor. But, you know, these days I feel like you really just kind of like cast more towards your natural type because just, you know, I don't, I, I don't know, Instagram, reality TV. I think people just kind of want you to be you. Um, and I feel like it's kind of been a departure from like embodying like a different role, which I like. Um, and I kind of grew up on, but I feel like it's kind of like swayed away from that recently. Um, and so, I mean, like, for example, like SWAT, I'm going in for like a burly trucker, you know, I was like, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I see that, you yeah, know, yeah, I, I can sure. do that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't know if it was like typecast, but again, I don't even mind because it was just opportunities. Like I, I'm, right. I was coming from a place of like, just wanting to get in the room and like have a shot. And so to get, to get those shots and now to still keep getting shots when a lot of people I know are like our auditions back and i'm like oh my god like i'm slammed i like you know i feel yeah. very lucky for that um just to have the opportunities because of my past you know yeah. um but certainly still challenging no this that this week for me was like so busy with auditions i was like can you that's oh, like i need a break <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, I, know, uh, I was slammed I know, I know. man i'm just so many but um and that yeah, it, too it was like like last like a week ago last saturday i remember i, I like <laughs> It was Friday. I was like just out for a walk with my uh, with my baby, and like within like a span of an hour, I got like four auditions. Like yeah. you know, like due Monday. Right. And, and it was like, like a certain point. You're like, man, I would have dreamed about this, but now I'm like, damn. Like I was kind of just like looking forward to like a chill weekend, and I'm like, right. this is a lot. I'm like this is like scripts, you know, sides, different outfits, different. Like yeah. I'm like, this is gonna yeah. be a demanding weekend. It's gonna be. A and whole I remember weekend, like yeah. busting out like the whole weekend. I was like here, you know, it was like you know, nine a.m. to five, just kind of like 
working, 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 working. And it's like, nope, didn't hear anything, you know? So there's like those <laughs> moments too, where you're like, man, yeah. like, oh, I'm for sure going to get one of these. Like I crushed all of them. And like, I was like, I changed from like, you know, like the cokehead porn director to like <laughs> Ryan Reynolds, little brother in a Christmas movie to like an asshole cop in Picard. I was doing all this stuff. And I was like, oh, for sure. Like I'm going to get one crickets, <laughs> you know? But then you get back on the horse and now I'm like ready to get SWAT. So I don't know. There's a that, that mentality of like, you know, you've tasted the, the uh, you know, you've had the golden tickets and now you know it's there and you're like, you're just kind of yeah. ch chasing, chasing it again, you know? Yeah. And Go ahead. I was just going to say, speaking of golden tickets, two days ago, I just watched Trial of the Chicago 7. Awesome yeah. movie. I loved it. I didn't even, as soon as I Johnny said we were having you as a guest, I was like, oh, where did I just see him in? And oh, you yeah. did great. How Thank was you. that? How did you get that? It's Aaron Sorkin directed and wrote it. How'd that come about? Right. Uh, also crazy. So in, in the midst of, you know, the slow times for acting, um, I, I, I got into producing and I'm into producing and I feel like I'm, I'm good at that too, because it was a thing where I'd done so many indie films and I knew lots of directors. I knew lots of financiers and investors. I had friends that wrote scripts and I was like, gosh, like I know, I know all these people. And like, if I could just kind of like put them together, like, I feel like I could like produce, um, and so, I don't know, randomly, I, I did like this like series uh, a few years ago that never came out. But um, one of the actors from that hit me up randomly and was like, hey, there's this movie that David Ayer directed that Shia LaBeouf is in called The Tax Collector. They need like $2 million for post. I know you said you had contacts to investors. Like, do you think you'd want to hit them up and see? And then, you know, if you can get them, like we get like a little finder's fee and a producer credit. So I hit a bunch of them up. One of them came through. Um, and then through that, I got in with the studio, Cross Creek, who was doing Chicago 7. And mm. then Cross Creek came back to me. And this is crazy. This is like crazy business too. Chicago 7, which is Aaron Sorkin, you know, Spielberg yeah. and Amblin are producing. You have that cast. At that time, Jeremy Strong wasn't in it. It was Seth Rogen who was attached to it. Oh, wow. And they they needed money. It was like Paramount put up money, Amblin put up money, Cross and they Creek still put needed up money. More. And they still were like, we're looking for like $7 million, you know, whatever it was. Um, and so they reached out to a bunch of people that were like, you know, any any private equity, you know, financiers, you know, we want, want to avoid like another studio thing. So again, I, I found someone, um, but I told them, I was like, look, like, you know, you know, you know, I'm an actor and I'm like, this is a hell of a movie. And it's like a period piece. And I'm like, there's like, there's gotta be something in there I can be right for. Uh, so they were like, well, probably, but they're like, you know, it's Sorkin. Like, he's not just going to like be told what to do. Like, you know, we'll get you an audition and we'll put in a good word, but you know, you got, you got to do your thing. So, uh, so I did, I went in for Francine Maisler, great. Also a big casting I mean, that's, director. It's like, so hard to get into cast it. Man, I've been wanting to audition for her for God knows how long. <laughs> right. I know. I was yeah. like, okay, fine. And, and that was like, that was a crazy thing because so I got this audition. So I, so I got, I, I had the script obviously, because when I found investors, I needed to pass on the script. Right. So I read the script. I knew like five roles I could play. So my agent hit me up with one role and I, for the audition. And I was like, look, like there's like these four others I know about. And I'm like, can I, can I read for multiple ones just to like increase my odds? So he reached out. They were like, all right, he can read for these three. So I went back to my coach, the same coach from Glee, coached for like a day because it was like 20 pages of Sorkin, you know, yeah. um, and then had the audition. But that was crazy too because I thought it was like a session, but it was a little bit of a special thing because I went in and it was like just me, like in her personal office, like no, there's no sign-in sheet, no other actors. Like it was clearly like, you know, okay, cool, like a favor to the studio, like we'll see him. So that was great. And I kind of like, you know, built confidence right before I read, um, read all three roles, felt great. Didn't hear anything for a month. And then finally they called me and said, uh, <laughs> said, you have a role, but I was like, who I didn't read Who's that. <laughs> and even my agent was like, I don't know. And then I, I talked to like, the guy at the studio and I was like, Hey man, like, thanks. They said I was cast, but like, like I read, I read the like, script Woja and it's not even you? there. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I, I don't remember this guy. And he, he, he was like, who? I was like, what the fuck? Like, what role? <laughs> and it was, you know, it was really like the smallest, as you know, from watching it, like it was so small, you know, it's like four lines. But I think it was just like, all right, like, you know, you, you're a good actor, you have the right look, you help, you know, you help with the movie and like, kind of like throw you a bone. So I definitely think, again, little side door, like had I not have had yeah. all that, like I wouldn't have even gotten that part, but because of everything leading up to it, uh, and I do think, you know, it was a good audition. Um, but of course, you know, it's not to say that everything else didn't totally help. Um, but so it was a small part, but what was great was that 
I got to shoot for like three weeks because like the mm. riot scenes wow. in Chicago took so long to film. And I like, so it was like two weeks in Chicago, but really all my, I mean, I have one line where like, I just like shake hands with Sasha Baron Cohen. And then like the rest of my stuff was in the courtroom in New Jersey, like a month later, but all the trial stuff, or the, uh, the riot stuff was great because it was just two weeks of like walking around and like, you know, the hippie gear talking to all these actors and just like soaking in these giant scenes and like mm. hearing, you know, Aaron Sorkin and video village, you know, give notes. There was just like this like masterclass and so fun to hang with these guys and hear stories and like go out to dinners. And so like, I felt like I was much more of a part of it than what comes yeah. across on screen, but so for the experience, you know, and the money and right. getting to know Sorkin, um, it was fantastic. And obviously now it's like winning awards and up, possibly up for an Oscar. And right. so, so we'll see. But then that also has led to another thing. Now he's uh, Aaron Sorkin is doing another movie about Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz uh, with Nicole Kidman and Javier Bardem. Mm. Auditioned for that, Francine. Amazing. Uh, didn't get it because uh, whatever, you know, too young, whatever. You know, Aaron say he likes me, knows me. I did great in Chicago 7, but not going to get it. But because of that, Francine told my agent she's doing Damien Chazelle's next movie called Babylon and wants yeah, to try Mar to get Margot Robbie, right? That. Margot Robbie, Brad yeah. Pitt. So I just auditioned for that and uh, waiting, awesome, dude. waiting to hear, but that would be great to work. Oh, with man, you're, you're, so in, we'll you're in, you're in, you're in the door. Um, I was going to ask that's, you, we're, that's we're, we're working with Sorkin. I mean, no, he's, I know he's a stickler for his words. Um, how did that, what kind of experience was that with, with, with working with him? Surprisingly, that was the rumor. And I, and like day one, we were all there, like in like a little conference room of a hotel. And I remember Jeremy Strong, who's fantastic in succession and you have to watch it if you okay yeah we all know succession yeah um and he asked he was like you know rumor has it like I, it was clear like they hadn't like really met you know or discussed mm. or something but um he said like you know how are you about like word for word and like beats and everything like that yeah. and aaron said he's like he was like look like i know what's out there about me he's like you know try try one or two the way i wrote it but like if something comes to mind or you feel inspired or you want to change a word here or there it feels more natural to you he was like by all means like go for it and we we're like all right. All <laughs> right. Full like, time. Yeah. Like he was, he was really a dream, like so humble, so down to earth. So like um, self-deprecating, uh, like collaborative. Like he just, he just wanted like, he was curious. He wanted to like talk to you about articles he read that day, politics. Uh, he was like, excited, passionate to be there. Um, encouraging, like really, really like, I thought I'd be very intimidated by him. And he is because of, because of who he is. But um, I don't know. It was like a very, very cool experience because he, he just wanted you to, be, to do great and like be the best you can be. Um, and his excitement was kind of infectious. So mm -hmm. he was great. Uh, yeah. And I mean, the, the pinch yourself moments was like in the courtroom where they're, I'm like, you know, Frank Langella is right here as the judge. And I'm just like talking with Frank Langella. And then there's like Aaron Sorkin and I'm seeing yeah. like Mark Rylance and like Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Uh, and I was just like, what is going on? You know, like it was, yeah. it was crazy. Um, yeah. so that was, uh, it just like for that was, was a really cool experience. But so here's a, you guys probably know about this, uh, as, as actors, but you know, sometimes you do lines with someone who's not, not there or, you know, you have to cheat something. So that's the crazy thing about this was that Chicago seven, one day in the courtroom, they had all the cameras facing the lawyers and, you know, the defendants, the prosecutors, and then the, you know, the audience in the courtroom. And then the next day they kind of like, you know, turned around and they would just get everything on like the witnesses and the judge and just kind of, so they didn't have to go back and forth. You know what I mean? So, um, so for like Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Mark Ryland, you know, like for their coverage, I, I was there and we were doing our lines and I was like, sweet, like I can't wait for tomorrow, but tomorrow comes. And they're not there. And it's like, oh, it's man. just an empty courtroom. And yeah. it's just like me and Frank Langella. And here's and your like, eyeline like, right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like, there's like Look this here. background guy is Joseph Gordon-Levitt. This one's Mark <laughs> yeah. Ryland. And like the AD like over there is going to be like shouting your lines to you. And I was like, <sighs> no, like, this is so crazy. Like, I thought I'd get to like, look these guys in the eye. So I'm like, okay, like, here we go. Like, you know, no choice. Um, but luckily, obviously, you know, it, it edits together and it plays. And what was so sweet was that uh, like lunch that day, Joseph Gordon-Levitt came over and seriously was like, I heard you did the scene and like, we weren't even like called in. He's like, I'm so sorry. Like, I hate that. Like, I, I wish mm. I was there for you. And like, I hope it was okay. And I was like, whoa, like, you're awesome. You know, like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah it would have been nice if you were there, Joe. Um, but no, it was, it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, way to screw me, man. Man, yeah, the scene really turned nice. out terrible. Thanks a lot, man. <laughs> hope you had a nice chill breakfast. You know? <laughs> um, so no, he was really cool. So that was a great, a great experience for, for sure. You know? 
And how was uh, Sasha Baron Cohen? Just getting to also, be next yeah, awesome. Yeah, he obviously, you know, <laughs> he was very nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, he really was. I mean, smart as hell, like just so quick, crazy vocabulary, uh, so nice, um, and worked really hard. It was like he had, there was like, you know, like an accent, like a, a, a dialect coach with him, like an acting coach. He had like this binder like marked with all these tabs of like just like notes and like you know like just, i think it was like you know just thoughts of like you know the character and like you know journals he was jotting down and he was like sending um sending aaron sorkin emails with like quotes every day from like the real abby hoffman mm -hmm. um and really like he was the one that was attached at the very beginning like so this is crazy it was like 12 years before it was made sasha i think in college had studied at abby hoffman and like cultural revolution and was very into it and him and Spielberg was going to direct it. And it was going to be like Heath Ledger as Eddie Redmayne's part. And Will Smith was uh, the part that, you know, Yaya Abdul-Mateen played. Um, and so it was, it was like going to be made then. And then like that fell apart for whatever. And then I think it was like uh, DiCaprio was attached at one point and like uh, Ben Stiller or something was like going to like direct. It was like all these weird, mm -hmm. you know, amalgamations yeah. that led to this. Um, so Sasha was like really excited just to like finally be there finally do shooting it. it. And I, and, and my wife was pregnant at the time and, you know, he had kids. So we were just like talking, you know, regular stuff about like kids and how do you balance out like marriage and kids and being on location and like helping them home, you know, with homework on FaceTime, but like learning lines. And um, so it was just stuff like that, where again, you know, just, just really normal down to earth, genuine guys. And that's what I find a lot, like, even like with, with Sully uh, name dropping, but you know, Tom Hanks, like sweetest dude like we would just hang like in the little first class section of the airplane and he would just like share stories from his past experiences and like just talk about politics make us laugh like he has this great airstream trailer where like the little like the ceiling pops out and he sets out like a poker table and mm -hmm. like in between uh setups you know you can just go over there and sit this open like come hang out and like play poker and it's like you know mm -hmm. i was like that's the thing is like the people that have had the biggest attitude and egos were like i think the people that like uh, are like most insecure um and who like aren't really confident you know in in, in themselves or that or believe that they they deserve where they're at and so they kind of have to like make up for it with some kind of food um but everyone that's been like a legend already that i've met it's like they've been great <laughs> and like it's been like a pleasure to work with i think they just like they know that they're who they are and they're just like why be an asshole about it you know it's yeah really nice. and that's yeah. only was was clint eastwood right mm-hmm that was uh, okay. There's a crazy they, story. You want to mention? Yeah, mention him because I've also heard with him that he's kind of infamous for doing like one take, maybe two. Yeah, like just move, that's, moving that's on, guys. True. Or or shoot the rehearsal and he gets it. He knows what he wants. He wants eight hour days. Uh, mm. but he, he's got a crew that he works with for every movie. So there's like this. There's a trust. He trusts. You know, he's got the best people around him. There's like a shorthand. Um, and he just you know he knows like he's been doing it long enough. He knows like if you know he, he sees the edit in his mind so it's kind of like if he if he gets the piece that he needs that he knows is going to go into the movie like why do it again and again like we got it like let's let's move on it's not going to be that different so he doesn't like go into the ground and it's actually like a really pleasurable experience like you just you move fast you kind of like you, you you know you stay creative you do what you want to do like that first take or the rehearsal that they shoot because they might not even do like an official take um so that was crazy. But here, so the story uh, to that, by the way, Clint is a beast because he would get there before all of us, work out with a personal trainer, shoot the full eight hour. You know, he's obviously involved in everything. He, you know, he was there. And then he would be going to like these like events at night, to, like, you know, honor veterans or like some, you know, AFI like classic. And like, I'm like, damn, I'm sleeping. Like I'm exhausted at like yeah. you know, five in the morning. And I'm like, this dude's like 88 years old. I was going like, to say he's like 90 all almost or something, right? Yeah, I, I think mean, so, Sully, he oh. was like, he turned like 88 or something. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, it's and crazy. I was like, my, my wife came to set and like, he, you know, he, he was like, he was talking to her and she's like, he's like, he's kind of a babe. And I was like, what? You know, she's like, he's got like, he's like, these like eyes, like he's so confident. And I'm like, all right, like, chill out, you know, but like he does. Like he, he's like, he just, he's like, you know, he's Clint Eastwood. Like, yeah, he's man. Clint Eastwood. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, but that story was, so I was in New York. I was living in New York for like a period of time, just like I had done Glee. I did Switched at Birth. I moved to New York just to see, because I was like, I want to do like theater and like Broadway. And like, I want to like, you know, do like the serious acting. And I went to New York and I got an audition for Woody Allen's film. That was crazy. So I, they, they said, you do a cold read monologue. They'd give you a monologue. You'd read for casting directors. So I did. 
three weeks later, I heard they want to bring me back to meet Woody, that he doesn't like reading you, that he just wants to meet you and see your personality. And I was like, so I'm just going to like talk to Woody Allen. Like, what do I say? So I go in and of course they're like, oh, now he wants you to read. Like, here's three pages. And I was like, no, like, I have to right. like, learn this in like five minutes, like read for the guy. Yeah. So I do. And it's a crazy experience because I walk in and, you know, cast director is like, oh, you know, Woody Allen, this is Max Adler. And I was like, yeah, I, I know. Like, nice to, uh, nice to meet you, sir. You know, did you, did you read crazy... with Woody or was he just observing? No. So this is the crazy thing. So, you know, in, in a usual audition, like I'm sitting here, camera's there, cast director is there for Woody. Uh, it's like, I'm sitting here, casting director is here and like, we're talking but Woody is like over here kind of like circling you, like look, like looking at like all your angles and like coming like around here. And like, he's like moving all around you kind of like a shark and just kind of like, like analyzing you as you're like here reading. And it's like, he's like seeing something in his mind and it's like, and no one told me. So I'm like, I'm just trying to like stay focused, but I'm like, oh God, like Woody Allen's like walking in circles around him. This is fucking crazy right now, you know? Um, but so I got that uh that was like a few days of shooting and so that was with bruce willis uh in la like at some house in the pacific palisades also a dream but here's the crazy story so we're shooting bruce willis we all grew up on he's a badass but he didn't really know his lines and he was having something something was going on there was like an off day i don't know what it was Mm. uh lots of rumors but there's i don't know what was going on but it was awkward and like there was a time when like woody pulled like bruce and me to the side because like something was not happening, like the scene was not happening, which is also crazy. Cause I'm like, I'm sitting here watching like Woody Allen, like scold Bruce Willis. And I'm like, oh my God, like, is he gonna punch him in the face? Like, this is crazy. Um, so I remember driving home from set that day, like at midnight, you know, I'm calling my wife. She's like, oh, was it amazing? I was like, actually like, it was really awkward and like weird. Yeah. And like, there was like yeah. a vibe on set that like wasn't working, like not what I thought it would be. And then like two days later, like a deadline article comes out that's just kind of like something like oh bruce willis now has a scheduling conflict with some broadway show he's like pulling out of woody allen and i was like mm. hmm, okay uh so cut to he gets like replaced by steve carell i get we right. you know my that's, a, that's a big and, that's and, a big um, difference in, in <laughs> style yeah yeah i don't you know I think, you know, they all say, they say Woody, like, kind of wants the person to be, like, a version of Woody, you know, um, and I don't think, I think Bruce wanted to be Bruce, and mm. I think Steve could be more Woody, so anyway, they set up these dates for, like, okay, he's gonna shoot in a couple months, you know, with Steve Carell, and I was like, great, like, more time with Woody, like, another day on set, you know, more, now I get to work with Steve Carell, but in that time, so, I'm in New York, I get the audition for Sully, fly back to L.A., I'm just I'm feeling good about Woody. I'm feeling good about New York. I was like, I'm not gonna book a Clint Eastwood movie. Like, no way is that gonna happen, like back to back, you know. But like, whatever, I'll go. I'm tired, it's like you know, red eye flight. I'm kind of looking at the lines, I'm like, you know, like falling asleep, whatever. And I get to the audition the next day and I'm reading, and the casting director starts reading my lines, and like we're like overlapping, and I'm like, What are you doing? Like, what why are you reading my lines? And she was like, What are you doing? And I was like, what? And she's like, you're reading the wrong character. And I was like, oh, shit. I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I was looking at this, like, at midnight on the plane. Like, I'm such an asshole. Like, oh, my God. And I was like, they, they laughed. And I was like, oh, my God. And so, like, then they're like, well, just, just read the other character. And I was like, like, right now? So it was like total cold read in the room. I left calling my manager. And I was like, I'm never going to get called back into that office again. Like, I'm done. Like, I, like, yelled at the casting director for, like, stepping on my lines. Like, shit. <laughs> randomly got got the job and it was like that little mistake kind of i think like made me like stand out and now i'm friends with that casting director and she still is like we watch that tape every once in a while and get like a big laugh out of it um and okay. i just think you know it was random like cold <laughs> read and like clint liked it and That's cast funny. me but then the, the crazy shit was that of course when you i know, needed to shoot the woody steve carell movie it, it was a direct conflict with clint yeah. eastwood so it was like my agent called me it was like good news bad news like you booked sully but you're going to have to like drop out of the Woody Allen movie. And I was like, what? You know, I'm like out of like 500 days that I'm like going without work, you know, like, like know. the three That's, that's days, how it always like, happens. There's though, a right? conflict. Yeah. I guess so. You know, the like feast yeah. of famine. So I did have to like drop out of Woody. And I, I wrote this like apology email to like the casting director and to him. And I was like, by all means, like, I'm so sorry. 
but uh but sully was like six weeks and it was like you know a big deal and um and cafe society was like you know three days and so yeah so that was a crazy crazy story too so that was that. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> that that's that's such a hard decision because you're like all right two great directors you know how do you pick it comes out of the days and woody yeah yeah it was like yeah. I, I i did that and i just felt that sully was kind of you know going to be bigger um and really just you know financially it was like six weeks versus three days and i was like right. okay like you know um well, on the and, top of that you could have already shot it if it had worked out with with bruce if it was bruce i would have been, been done it. yeah you would have been right. done you know and so it was, it's like but yeah 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 kind of weird That's, i know i know again like a crazy like who would have thought that would have happened but uh right. but it did so yeah you you kind of you kind of touched on this already but i mean because i i had you know going through imbb i had noticed that you had obviously co-executive produce like you talked about trial chicago seven tax collector which i actually yeah. worked with bobby soto i don't even know if you oh. know him at all yeah he's great yeah yeah yeah, yeah. We, i never we were... met him but he really oh, okay. great performance yeah yeah we, we worked we worked together on narcos right before uh uh the pandemic happened like literally right we were in mexico city shooting and then wow pandemic wow came back um oh really gosh. cool dude man. Awesome. i had a, had a great time working with him um that's yeah. a great show too that's that's awesome narcos that's huge It'll be yeah. Hopefully, hopefully when it airs, I'm, I don't <laughs> right. even know what they they're uh, doing. Yeah. It was a it was a weird process, but um, yeah, aren't they? But yeah, aren't they always? <laughs> I know, but I was kind of curious because you you had produced obviously, and you kind of did did touch on that. Um, we obviously like to produce our own stuff as well. Yeah. Um, you know what is uh, you know, working on some of these projects is uh, I know you're producing more stuff now in the future, kind of looking at your at your IMDb and stuff. Um are there certain things that you specifically want to make and put yourself into or kind of what's, you know, I know you, you got some great roles off of that, but yeah, that, some I stuff mean, are you kind of doing now? Just great. Uh, well, I want to put out great stories that, you know, I inspire or could change things. Like, you know, having, having done Glee really was like the wake up call of just like, man, like it, it can be more fun or more, you know, more than just fun. It's like this, this really was changing lives and like making a difference. And I'm, that's, there's power to, to media and even with Chicago seven and just, you know, it's like being a part of like stories that like, to me, like actually matter and like, you know, get out in the world, like make people think or like reassess, you know, the way that they're behaving um, is like just powerful. So I would like to do that. Really what's happening is just that again, the kind of network of like people will share a script with me that I'm like, man, this is like really good. And like, I think I know a production company that this could be right for or a director that would love this uh so it's that it's just like it's just different different projects that i feel that could be really good whether there's a role in there or not you know obviously i would like to but it's really just like if i, if I can kind of help get it made and like and and produce it and connect the dots and see it out there in the world from just like a script uh it's 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 very cool so like yeah one, one thing i'm trying to do now we partnered with a production company we're out to a director um is is like a, a true story about like the first black horse jockey in america that like you know was that racing become, in like a very, become the wind That's the become one. the wind yeah, yeah it was like late 1800s and it was like horse racing was like you know super bowl it was, it was like the biggest sport in america like you know dominated by by white people and and this guy isaac murphy was just like you know working in working in the barns and kind of you know like working with horses and and started like riding them for fun and became like awesome and got like death threats and beat up and people would try to you know screw him up on the, on the racetrack off the racetrack and so it's just this great you know it was like someone brought this story to me and i'm like man like true story you know topical you know racism there's there's you know equality inspiration there's like a love story they're you know overcoming obstacles like this is like an award-winning movie um but you know the person who had it like just didn't have the ins uh that you know i i do now because of all my experience so I brought it to several people and, you know, one bit. So they kind of, they optioned it. And yeah, so now, you know, we're out to, uh, we're out to a director, um, which could be pretty big. And so, you know, we'll see. And then we'll kind of go down the list if they pass, but um, you know, so there's that. And there is a role in the, you know, like, like the white goon who, you know, gives him <laughs> shit, of course, but, um, but there's that one. And then there's like another uh, fingers really crossed for this one, but like Francis and the Godfather is Barry Levinson directing and mm. it's uh, Oscar Isaac uh, plays Francis Ford Coppola. Oh, and man, Jake I love Oscar Isaac. Same. Yeah, yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal plays the head of Paramount. And it's like the story of like the battle to make like Godfather the way Francis wanted to versus like the studio way. And, and it's like this true story and period piece. So that is one also weirdly that like is looking, you know, for some from extra uh, funding. 
So currently in the works of that with investors, like if it does go through, then I'm like, hey, can I have a role? You know, there's, there's right. that. Um, I have one friend, is just a screenwriter friend, is like writing a script that like was just an idea me and my wife had, but like I'm not, I took a crack at it, I'm not a good writer. So he's like writing this and we're just kind of going back and forth with drafts. So it's just that, just like, you know, kind of juggling just things I'm trying to like have going besides the waiting for like an audition that's like totally out of my control, you know, yeah. it has something to do with have a little more control over it, you know. And, and I don't know happen. if, uh, I don't know if you can kind of talk about this if you can, it's fine, but, uh, because I am, I am kind of curious how that how that world works, and we do have a lot of filmmakers that listen to the podcast. But when you're when you come on as a producer for the film, specifically like looking for a financier, things like that. Um, typically, how are you paid? Is it sort of like a finder's fee, or are you more actively involved in act the actual producing of the film and like production aspects of it, or how does that work? Case by case, uh, so a movie. You know, like it's it's all it's all different. One movie I I produced was called Foster Boy. That I was more hands-on because it was like, I knew I had done another movie with the writer and the writer like gave me the script. And it was like, you know, like we had worked on the script for several years. I had like, you know, I found, I brought Robert Ulrich in to cast it, um, you know, found actors, found money. It was like, you know, I found a, another producer who had more experience than I did. So it was like really like more hands-on and that was an actual like producer fee. By the way, uh, my, my friend David Bianchi is in that movie. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cop. yeah. Was the cop. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I worked or, with or him the, on another no, show. Or the flight attendant. I'm not we, sure what we, role he was, but I saw on yeah. his IMDb he was on there Bald and I was man, like, oh, like David. Yeah. 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 Great, yeah he's great a cool actor, dude. Great guy. Yeah. Um, small world. So so that was that. But then like for like ta tax collector, that film was already done. They just needed money for post. So it was like, all right, you know, I, that was that was a finder's fee and a credit, but nothing to do on the film because it was done. Um, I got to meet David Ayer at like a screening. So that was kind of cool, you know, but um, not that he remembers me, but uh, that was great. <laughs> and then Chicago 7 obviously was like in the beginning of the of, you know pre-production. So then I got to actually like, you know, contend, you know, fight to be in that one. So I think it's just kind of case by case, but yeah, when, if you're, you know, if you're a, like a finder, then yeah, if you bring in money, there's like a, there's like a, a percentage that varies negotiated small, but like, you know, it's split between all the other people that were involved and then you get, get a credit. Um, but I think like, for example, like the horse jockey movie, that is like, I'm, I'm like a part of it from the beginning and it's like more than just money. I'm like putting pieces together. So that would be an actual, you know, producer fee. Um, and hopefully be in it as well. So I think it's just kind of case by case. There's no, there's no like blanket, you know, rule. Yeah. Uh, it just kind of depends where you kind of jump in in the process and how many people are already involved and you know what the caliber of the project is and and all that, you know. But it's really, um, I don't know. It's just kind of like having like a network and staying in touch, you know, with people over the course of years because it's like crazy, like you know, just kind of like collecting like different people from like different areas that I'm like, wow, I never thought I would talk to them, you know, seven years later, but like, wow, like that, this thing kind of reminds me of that thing that they said in passing at lunch. And I reach out to them. Like they know this guy who knows this person has like this weird, like butterfly effect spider web that, you know, you just don't, you don't know uh, where, where you'll see them again. So, yeah. 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 I'm looking at your IMDB. What about this show cryptos? That looks kind of cool. Cryptos is another one. So that was, uh, it's, it's happening literally days ago. Um, they, uh, I know the writer of it. Um, it's kind of like a Silicon Valley entourage, uh, you know, show, but uh, in the world of like cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and kind of like the future of that and how that'll change, uh, you know, the world. Um, but really like the show, it's, it's kind of like about if there was like a studio built on blockchain and on uh, on people investing in what they want to see instead of like a few network executives kind of telling everyone what they should see and people having like a stake like an actual like stake you know in in that in that network and it's kind of mm -hmm. like this rise from you know aspire like it's like if all of us were like hey like why don't we do this and then like building it so really cool show and i brought that to the same production company that's doing become the win um and they liked it and so yeah like days ago we just signed like an option agreement for that and uh that now like the next goal will be to try to like attach a showrunner who means something who like you know amazon or something can like trust and who will like inspire confidence in like a writer's room um so we'll just go down the list and uh you know same thing if, if i can be in that great but if i can you know produce it and help get it going great but that's just something else that i kind of like believed in and thought it would be really exciting and so uh 
Yeah, so there's, there's that too. Is that, is that on IMDb? I didn't even know that's on IMDb. That's, on there? that's <laughs> on, crazy. Uh, on your producer credit. So you like believe in, in Bitcoin and stuff? That's like. Uh, I, I honestly, I don't really know. My, I'm, I'm not in it. I'm not in it. I don't have it. I know. I know about it. I know what it is. Um, I'm not as educated as the guy who, you know, who, who wrote it and like the producers of it. I'm, I'm just more like the guy that can connect uh, an exciting script to someone who can do something with it. Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess I believe in it. I don't really, again, I, I'm not, I'm not too educated not to speak about it, but I know that the guy who wrote it really thinks it's like it, it, it's a future of like a disruptor that's going to lead to many other things like solar energy and, and, you know, uh, entertainment, like things beyond just the dollar. But why, what's your thoughts on it? I'm curious. <laughs> well, no, I, really, I don't know. To, to be completely real with you, I'm a huge Bitcoin believer, you know, both mm -hmm. me and my brother are, we actually have a, a, a YouTube channel where we do, um, we have half a million wow. subs and we like do uh, news, uh, perspective, opinion, market analysis on crypto. So we're huge believers. Oh, whoa. Wow. That's awesome. Okay. Well, yeah. So, I mean, the, the writer is Eric Swords, uh, who just, he's like, he went and studied like in, in China, like speaks Mandarin and like works with like solar energy and, you know, huge, a huge believer of it. And like, knows, you know, he just can rattle off like, well, you know, since Reagan and like the 1971, like, you know, like the dollar went away. And I was like, okay, like this is crazy. So yeah, I don't know much about it, but that's kind of the thing. I think everyone, uh, most people don't, you know, they kind of hear about it and it's kind of like this, like this weird thing, but like, I think it really sounds like it could be the future. Um, so it sounds, it sounds exciting. So yeah, again, it was just something exciting to, to, to be a part of. Uh, so we'll okay, and I hear all the actors are getting paid in crypto as well. Right? So, is that the... <laughs> I guess I, I won't know how to access it, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know. But that, but that was not, another thing they talked about was like, they, they were off, they, they worked with like the SEC and they wanted to offer like an actual token to investors. And like, it's kind of same thing. It was like the meta thing of like actually having investors of the project be like literally invested in, in the project and like not, you know, have like voting rights and shares and like not really creative control. Um, but kind of wanting to see it, you know, do well and getting a return and just like, like, is, is this a possible thing for the future of, of entertainment? And I guess, you know, it's, it's like a, a whole other, you know, uh, it's like Kickstarter on steroids, but, um, but you know, we'll see there's a lot of potential, but that's kind of cool that you guys know about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you think it's like, like the dollar is just like done? Like is, is Bitcoin the future? Dude, I could, we could talk two hours about this. Yeah. <laughs> the dollar has been, like your friend said, you know, keeps getting debased, you know, as you know, yeah. I mean, just within since 2008 and, you know, the COVID stimulus, but even just thinking back to the eighties, you know, the dollar has less purchasing power. And so, you know, Bitcoin, this uh, censorship resistant, permissionless, decentralized, hard capped, you know, finite supply. It's just the dollar is losing value versus Bitcoin. Bitcoin's a better store of value. This is the argument, I guess. I mean, yeah, well, and, and his big thing too is it's it's kind of like power to the people, you know. It's like why, like the government's controlling everything and just printing out sheets of money, and it's like, where, you know, where is it coming from? It's like this is we're just kind of doing what we're told and exactly. following, you know, like a sheep like getting in line. But like really, I feel like with with Bitcoin and crypto, it's like it kind of like gives brings brings it back it's to the open people. Open source, decentralized, anybody can check. So like you said, you know, we don't know when the Fed is going to print more money, but with Bitcoin, right. it's open source monetary policy, which is obviously better than just a few people controlling it all. Jeez, we should bring you on as a writer. <laughs> you guys, if you guys yeah. need a consultant, there. I'll tell you what, if, if we get any traction with this, I'll, I will reach back out. You know what you're talking about. I, For sure. Yeah, I, we've actually a lot, a lot of words that went right over my head. Huh? <laughs> we've been following this. You know, we've like reported on this the crypto show for. I think it was first announced. Wasn't um, what's his name who played E from Entourage? Yeah. Kind of Kevin yeah. Connolly. Yeah. Kevin Connolly. Yeah, he was gonna yeah. direct. Yeah. Oh Pretty man. Good. Okay. Cool. Yeah, he was gonna direct it. I know because it was very, very like in the vein. Of that and that's actually yeah that they're they want to go out um to rob weiss who you know was, was one of the producers of entourage and baller yeah. so you know we'll see what happens but um well if it's yeah important that's pretty you, cool if it's important to you to have your actors be able to speak knowledgeably on cryptocurrency or even you actors, got it definitely uh let's talk hit you up i'll tell you what if i really will if, if this gets any traction and we, and we get moving i'll reach back out to you guys because you obviously you're, you're actors and you can produce stuff and you know what you're talking about so uh, good to know. See, this is how it happens. See, a podcast on a Saturday morning might lead to <laughs> show. You know, you, you don't know. That's crazy. There, there All it right, is, good man. To know. I yeah. love it. And I know we should uh, wrap this up because I know you have to pr prep for that audition. Yeah, yeah. And talk a little off mic. But any final thoughts, or where can our audience find you, Max? Well, my address is uh, no. I mean, um, <laughs> I don't know. They can find me on Instagram, uh, on Twitter. 
uh, I guess I have a Facebook uh, fan page. I don't really post much there, but Instagram, I, I share a lot of, about what's going on. I'll be on NCIS next week. I'll be on uh, All Rise. Well, I guess I don't know when this is going to air, but uh, those, those shows, uh, there's a jet ski racing comedy coming out called Hot Water. Uh, okay. uh, March, like, I think, like 19th. Yeah, it was great. It was shot in Havasu for three weeks and nice, just got to dude. ride around jet skis and it was like this American Pie kind of raunchy comedy, a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, I guess you can kind of if you want to stay up, stay up with my latest stuff uh, on Instagram. Um, otherwise, I'll just keep uh, keep hustling. And I guess I don't know. Last things to leave people with is just uh, it's it's a hard business, but hard work does pay off. And if you just kind of stay focused and you do something every day to kind of like take yourself closer to the goal and where you want to be, um, obviously you know it's 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 possible. It's just stay stay focused and work hard and be nice to people and uh, you know have have a have a kind of laser focus about where you want to go and what you want to do and just do something to make it happen. Yeah, I guess easier said than done, um, but it's certainly not easy. But when it does, when it does work out, it's pretty sweet. So yeah. So you're saying quit now? Um, yeah, get out and get room for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, man, it's great, uh, dude. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, obviously, I had a lot of fun working with you on all rides too. Yeah, so, you too. Uh, look, that was quite an experience. To, to for, uh, I know it was. Me, it's me it's interesting Johnny with COVID. Uh, yeah, we met in a parking garage, all flustered with our masks right. and our shields, and we were yeah. like, what the hell? We didn't know what we were doing, our clothes. The, that was a crazy, the, that crazy That's time, right, because we had to bring our wardrobe, and I was like, what? This is weird. Yeah, that, I know. That, it was like the Warner Brothers was... parking garage. Of like, yeah. Oh, I was like, oh, just, and then now I'm like pulling in. It's like COVID testing sites, and it's like, you know, <laughs> stop if you're sick. And I was like, what the hell? Like, what kind of world? This, this is nuts. <laughs> um, but we did it, you know? Yeah, we stayed man. six feet apart during the filming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we wore our masks right up until rolling and it was just a real uh, experience but uh all i remember we did it, is that there was like a it. there was like a background actor next to you they, they placed yeah. there and they're like whoa, whoa guys guys come on keep it apart yeah six feet six feet i know, <laughs> I know. Like, all right well good yeah uh, it was it was yeah. fun though man it was fun yeah. good yeah i felt really safe it was just uh <laughs> you know it was just the real, it was surreal because like i feel like you go you kind of go to like set and you're like oh this should be like a little like fairy tale escape from like the craziness of the world but really it was like nah, it's, it's leaving worse. the isolation yeah into that was like yeah COVID, 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 COVID. i was like oh my yeah. gosh like it's it's uh it's scary but i felt safe and they took good care of us and they were one of the first shows to come back and uh obviously they're still going so good for them and good for the entertainment industry as a whole you know yeah man it was Fighting. a lot of fun dude absolutely yeah I yeah. appreciate your time, man. Um, I know you got to hit that audition stuff, but uh, yeah. dude, thank you so much. Uh, wealth of information. Good, great stories, man. Appreciate it, dude. Well, appreciate you guys. Thank you. We'll be talking about uh, cryptos in the future. <laughs> uh, but thank you guys very much. Wish you all the best. Yeah, thanks, man. All right, take care.